According to reports, the retirement industry in South Africa is preparing for a surge in claims as the two-port retirement system is about to be implemented. President Sir Ramaphosa has signed the Pension Funds Amendment Bill into law, clearing the final legal hurdle for this system. Uh, the new legislation expected to take effect on September 1 will allow South Africans to access one-third of their retirement savings while preserving two-thirds for their future. However, there is still work to be done to ensure a smooth transition. So this morning, Professor Waldo Krugel, an economist at Northwest University, and Zanel uh, Sabela Kosatu. Of course, uh, we have another person who will be talking about this. Um, that is uh, Zanel uh, Sabela Kosatu, spokesperson, who will also be giving us updates as regards this. Uh, Professor Waldo Krugel and uh, Zanel, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, Professor Waldo, let me start with you, uh, Professor Waldo. Now, uh, given the anticipated flood of claims, uh, what are the potential economic implications of the two-port system? Let's start from there. I think the macroeconomic implications, uh, we'll have to see. The Reserve Bank puts the number for uh, potential withdrawals initially up to around 40 billion rand, uh, which is a lot of money. Uh, but in the bigger scheme of things, it's 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 not that much. So there is there is some anticipation of around an increase in consumption spending in the second half of the year. Uh, but of course, the, our interest rates will also play a role in, in uh, consumers' decisions around that. Uh, it's not clear how it's going to influence investment straight off. I think there are other important determinants of investment. Uh, so, so we could see a, a boost on the consumption spending side and maybe a, a little uptick of growth. I'm not sure if we're going to see much inflationary pressure from this. Uh, inflation is trending down for other good reasons as well. So uh, yeah, a, a small macro impact, uh, it, it, at least in this year, uh, going forward into next year. Uh, okay, so uh, Zanel, of course, um, I would say you represent um, Kosatsu, uh, one of the unions in um, South Africa. So uh, how are the union members taking um, this particular uh, form reform bill being uh, signed by the president? And how might this even impact uh, consumption, investment, and probably overall economic growth in the country? Okay, so as Kosatu, we celebrate the signing of this bill because it was actually initiated by us. Um, there is a structure we call NEDLEC, where business, organized labor, and government come together to discuss issues. And the reason why we pushed for it was because we saw a cash and knowing that they actually had cash sitting in their pension funds and they were indebted, what they would do then was to resign from their jobs, to be able to access this money. But then given that, you know, our economy hasn't been doing that great, we have a very high unemployment rate, they would then struggle to find another job. So this is why we suggested this. Um, this actually enables them to be able to access a portion of their savings and then have the other part, so a third of their portion of their portion of their pension funds they can access but then also the two-thirds stays until they are retired but then also at the very very importantly is the fact that uh, for this first year this the savings that they can draw is actually kept at 30,000 rands so in terms of it affecting the economy and affecting the the retirement industry um, I don't see that happening and especially since the retirement industry was actually part of these talks and that's how we got here. Uh, I'm actually glad that um, you affirmed that this particular bill um, emanated from um, COSATO, should I say, um, the organized uh, labor or the organized union. Now, there are some speculations that primary administrative challenges um, might occur, most especially for the uh, retirement fund administrators. Uh, is there a possibility that that might happen in terms of implementing this uh, two-port system? I don't know if you've actually factored that um, into um, this bill and how it will eventually uh, come into play. 
So the retirement funds uh, industry has had a long time to deal with this. This was the thing, this, this conversation started in May of 2020. So it's been a long time coming and they've had time. Um, and so this is just the final step where the president has signed this bill to be able to enable the retirement funds to change the rules around this but then they have been i think they're ready they've been talking about it they've been um you know readying for it for a very long time now and i think they're ready to you know to to implement it Hmm. Okay, let me go to uh, Professor uh, Waldo now. Of course, you heard Zanel talk about a uh, certain percentage um, that, um, of course, uh, retirees will be able to access and um, the other parts, which is about 50%, that um, will have to be spread um, across um, the remaining lifespan of the years, if I could uh, put it that way. So I I'm more concerned about the financial literacy levels of South Africans. Uh, are there concerns about individuals making impulsive decisions regarding uh, their retirement savings, um, what they will be accessing, what they will be investing that on in terms of how they would even be spending that and how that will be able to last them for, um, for the number of years that they might be hoping for? I think there are always concerns uh, it's throughout the industry, at least, and uh, economists, commentators are, are worried about uh, people not spending that money wisely. And the fact that they, they will be losing a cumulative value over time if they do withdraw. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that there's a lot of effort going into educating the public about this uh, right from the revenue service through to the individual pension funds to the, the bigger financial management industry. Industry. Uh, everybody's uh, got calculators up on their website. They've got information brochures and pamphlets. So th there's a lot of information for pension fund members about what the implications would be for, of withdrawing your money. And I think doing the maths and, and figuring out uh, is it worth taking the money, paying the tax uh, versus uh, uh, getting some debt relief? Th th those decisions will, will be made as, as, as clear as possible. Uh, individuals uh, with, uh, I think, any access to the internet or uh, uh, the ability to, to talk to a financial advisor uh, will get some good advice out there. Uh, uh, okay, so I think the, the union members are also getting advice. Okay, uh, so uh, there's a part I'd like to also bring up, Professor Waldo, and that has to do with um, the legal hurdles that the president, uh, Sir Ramaphosa, had to scale before passing the bill. Uh, was it that um, there were some T's that needed to be crossed and some I's that initially uh, were not actually done, or maybe some people were actually averse to this particular bill proposed uh, by the union members? I'd like to have an understanding on that. And if all parties have not come to the table um, to actually accept and internalize uh, this particular bill for the benefits of um, South Africans. I think there's always a process when you make a big change like this and, and uh, loads of stakeholders who have to uh, also give their views. And But uh, we, we're now at the point uh, where we're at implementation. I think I don't see, foresee any major legal challenges. Uh, I think it's a question of of getting the ball rolling and and actually sort of see what people do with uh, this opportunity that's now presented to them. Okay, well, uh, Zanel, now for you, uh, what are the potential uh, tax implications, if there are any, uh, for individuals trying to access the retirement funds? Uh, are there some bottlenecks? Are there some issues as regards uh, what they will be paying back um, to government by the time they're access the, accessing these funds, and in terms of paperwork, and of course, um, the protocol that will need to be observed? Uh, are there issues around that that a lot of South Africans uh, will need to be aware of? So of your tax, tax is an effect of life. And the fact that because your contributions to your retirement fund uh, are not, you know, are not taxed. When they go in, your, your, your pension, your contribution to your pension fund goes, goes out before you are taxed. So coming out of the fund, it will have to be taxed. Unfortunately, that's a fact of life. But people will be taxed at their own tax bracket. So we're not expecting it to be, um, you know, a bit too much. Uh, they will be taxed at the tax bracket, but unfortunately, uh, tax is a fact of life. And um, in there are actually discussions that are continuing. There are marathon discussions that are continuing to uh,
ones that they would be putting on extra and extra admin fee but then um, that is being discussed and we are saying to them no just put in the same admin fees that you used to put in at the beginning uh, there shouldn't be extra fees so um, we are watching this very tightly as we go towards one September and therefore we don't expect any problems okay uh, Zanel let me go also intimate with this according to reports uh, Michelle acting uh, the retirements uh, reform executive at Old Mutual uh, one that despite these positive developments, retirement funds and administrators still have a substantial amount of work to do before they'll be able to, um, uh, you know, access pay claims, uh, including ensuring administration readiness and um, the integration of these with the South African uh, revenue service. So do you consider this as a challenge? Do you see it as uh, surmountable or is surmountable uh, before the actual deadline? I, I think it's doable, certainly doable, like I said. Uh, so that, that date is not going to change. Um, and, and what you're talking about is the retirement funds are people that are capable. Uh, they handle a lot of funds um, and they work with, with the revenue collection consistently all the time. So we don't anticipate that there'd be any bottlenecks, no. Uh, Professor Waldo, what do you think about this? Because, of course, when you look at the retirement industry, there's expectation that a flood of claims from South Africans uh, would, of course, come into play when it comes to accessing a portion of their retirement savings come September. And Abzanella said that the date will not change. So um, when you look at the claims, when you look at the level of preparedness and um, the, you know, the potential bottlenecks that might come in terms of increased demands. Uh, do you think there will be a need for an increase in staff to meet up with the demand? Do you think that that actual deadline will be met in terms of, you know, the handlers, the administrators meeting up um, with um, this particular deadline also? What are your thoughts? I think everything's going to be in place. Uh, I also sit on the board of a pension fund and I know uh, that team has been working really hard to get everything ready. Uh, I'm, they, I'm not sure if they employed additional people, but uh, the current team has been putting in the hours and I think everything is, is, is going to be as, as good as it can get. Uh, they are they are regulated uh, very well, and I think there, there's no room for error in this regard. So I, I think it'll it, it'll it'll follow the, the the typical normal processes, and they'll be ready for this uh, on on one September. All right. Uh, okay. Finally, let me go to Zanel now. Uh, I'm just wondering: Are there on the, uh, other you know alternative approaches to providing financial relief um, to South Africans while preserving retirement savings uh, compared to the two port system? Because I'm actually looking at probably there are other ways by which um, South Africans um, can actually access monies if they need it, maybe for investments, for businesses, or for other um, encumbrances or you know necessities as it were, aside the two poor system. Okay, so understand that this initiative was mostly to to help out our members who were actually resigning from their jobs when they didn't need to, they were resigning from their jobs to be able to access their pension funds. So this immediately takes care of that problem. And um, in terms of them, I, I like the professor says. I don't think there's a problem that we're thinking that there'll be a run on pension funds and that the money that comes out of there will be um, will leave the the, the retirement funds, um, you know, virtually cashless. No, uh, that two thirds is still going to be going into the retirement funds. And the, the, the one third is the one that's going to be accessed. And so in terms of that, and also it, there is a cap of 30,000 and that is meant for this year because as COSATU, we were actually pushing for a cap of 50,000, but because we were negotiating, we ended up with a 30,000. And so I am sure because everyone was in the room when this was being discussed and as we were walking towards this, uh, this day. So, um, I think everyone is satisfied that, you know, everything is taken care of and um, yeah, we're just waiting on that. And it's not like we are encouraging our members that, you know, now that you can access uh, 
you know, that 30,000 cap or you can access a third of your savings. We're not just encouraging them to just go ahead and access it. It will be for people who actually need it. Uh, and they'll be using it for very important things. I mean, if you need it to pay fees for your university um, student, you know, a child who's a student, uh, it's for those kind of serious expenses. Hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, um, Zanel Sabela Kosatu, spokesperson, and of course, uh, Professor Waldo <laughs> Kogel, uh, economist at yeah, okay. Northwest uh, University. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.